Hi, I'm Brianna Marr. And I'm Rain Newcomb. You're watching This Week at Endicott. Looking for some Halloween fun and a volunteer opportunity? Look no further. Endicott will be hosting the annual Safe Trick or Treat event on Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. where students hand out candy to local families from their dorm rooms. Volunteers for the after party in the Post Center at 6.30 p.m. are needed. Contact your Residence Life staff for more information. Later that night, head down to the amphitheater at 8 p.m. for some spooky ghost stories with Dr. Wiley. Now let's take it over to our very own Matt Layton as he interviews George Kuntz, Head of Community Service here at Endicott College. Take it away, Matt. All right, thanks, Rain and Brianna. Halloween is this Saturday, and there's so much going on around campus. George Kuntz joins me right now from the Student Affairs Office. And George, can you tell us what's going on this week? Well, we're already into it. I mean, we've done, if you've looked around campus, you see already that the Callahan is, well, festive, let's mm -hmm. just say. I never thought we'd have a chandelier in the middle, but it's kind of spooky. It's awesome. Um, we, we've been doing a lot, and Student Activities has been doing such a great job. Uh, Bram McGann has been just tirelessly running around. Uh, we've already done our pumpkin uh, contest, which if you go down in the Callahan, awesome times down there. Um, we have Dr. Wiley's ghost stories coming up, and they are a tradition on campus. Mm -hmm. um, for as long as I've been on campus, they've, he's held it every year, captivates the audience. People come back, they've heard the same stories over and over again, but they come back and get recharged to be a little spookified, if that's yeah. a word. Um, and it's awesome. And so we have ghost stories coming up, and uh, our very special guest, Hannibal Lecter, will be there. Uh, we have uh, scary movie marathons going up. We have a uh, costume dance going on uh, Halloween night. So there's just a bunch of stuff going on around campus that, you know, is just to get everyone in the mood. We're in the right area for it. So. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, you being a former student here, what mm -hmm. is your favorite memory of Dr. Wiley's Ghost Stories? Oh, <laughs> uh, ooh, there are many. Um, really, it's just the way in which he, these stories captify, or, you know, captivate all, all of our students. Mm -hmm. When they come on campus for the first time, everyone goes, well, we heard that the campus is haunted. Is it true? And so we like to hold off on really telling the stories until that night because it's documented. I mean, books have been written. I mean, it's it's true. It yep. is 100% true. And whether you're a non-believer or not, sooner or later, you will feel a, a, a ghostly presence. But I think for, for, for me, it's just the way in which these stories just are a tradition on campus and and they continue to be and will always be long after anyone else is here even in the afterworld <laughs> agreed uh being so close to salem which is really the center of mm -hmm. halloween here in the bay state what advice uh, do you have for students who do plan to travel to Salem in order to stay safe throughout the holiday? Salem is fun. It really is. Uh, if, you, if you haven't gone yet, you have to go at least once. Mm -hmm. You know, you're right next door. Um, I don't move to Salem because for the sheer fact of October, you mm. can't move around. Mm -hmm. But um, anyone going, it, it definitely go in a group. Um, for as much as the city of Salem does a wonderful job at keeping everyone mm -hmm. safe, they close the city down early to ensure the safety of the residents, but anyone coming in, I mean, there are up to 10,000 people yep. influxing into the city of, of Salem mm -hmm. just for that one night. So safety numbers always. Um, make sure you do, <laughs> it's silly, but have a buddy system going on. Um, let people know that you are going in. Um, you know, dress warmly. It's nice to go out and be in your costume and everything, but it's going to get cold. And it gets cold quick, and, you know, we just want to make sure everyone's being safe. Um, knowing sort of where to go and where to stay away from. Um, downtown is probably your safest bet. Don't go in any back alleys. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go looking for the Sanderson <laughs> sisters. Um, but they will, you know, for the most part, the city of Salem does a wonderful job um, at, at keeping the peace and, and making sure everyone's just having a good time. You know, you're going to have your fun, but be smart. Right. I think that's a great message. You know, be fun, be smart. Mm -hmm. George? Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, and happy Halloween, happy everyone. Happy Halloween, absolutely. Uh, Rain and Brianna, back to you. Thank you for that amazing segment, Matt. In the mood for some more Halloween fun? Grab some friends and head over to the Cross Country Trail Thursday, where Residence Life presents the Haunted Trail. Then stop by the Wax Auditorium for a movie night that will scare your socks off. If you love suspense, you won't want to miss Paranormal Activity Ghost Hunters, which begins at 8 p.m. On Friday, don't forget to wear blue and show your school spirit in Callahan for a chance to win some free prizes. 
Put on your dancing shoes and make your way to Tia's Theater at 6 p.m. where there will be a hip-hop workshop. Now let's take it to sports with Matt Pritchard and Jessica Carroll. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of EC Sports. For ECTV, I'm Matt Pritchard. And I'm Jess Carroll. The football team picked up a big win over Maine Maritime this past weekend. The Gulls defense held up Maritime to only 14 points in their 37-14 victory. The Gulls defense was led by Connor McLaughlin and Alan Gibson, who, pick, who picked up NEFC Defensive Player of the Week and NEFC Defensive Rookie of the Week. The football team will be back at it Saturday the 31st as they travel to Western New England. The men's soccer team continued their unbeaten streak that dates back to their last loss for Tufts September 8th. They saw a tight 1-0 victory over Wentworth, which was backed by a great performance from CCC Defensive Player of the Week, Nick Weinstein, before they traveled to Salve Regina where they played to a 1-1 tie. They'll begin playing the CCC tournament Saturday the 31st. In the last competition for the fall season, the men's golf team saw a ninth place finish out of 22 teams at the NEIGA D3 Championship. The Gulls were led by Dan Nugas and Austin Teal, who finished in a tie for 28th overall. The field hockey team picked up a big win versus CCC opponent Gordon 2-0. The Lady Gulls will look to stay on the winning side as they move into their final two games of the season. They'll travel to Western New England Wednesday the 28th before finishing off their season at home versus Nichols Saturday the 31st. The women's soccer team suffered a pair of tough losses to Wentworth and Salve Regina, both ending 1-0. The Lady Gulls will start CCC tournament play Saturday the 31st. The women's volleyball team finished their week with a pair of wins and a loss. They saw wins versus UNE in Western New England while the loss came to Colby College. They will see their final action at home Saturday the 31st versus Eastern Nazarene and St. Joseph College. The women's rugby team saw their final game in the CCRC Championship where they played UMass Dartmouth. The game unfortunately ended with the Gulls on the wrong side as they suffered a 40-5 loss. While all the fall seasons are slowly ending, the winter seasons are beginning. The men's and women's hockey teams will kick off their seasons this week. The men's team will begin Saturday the 31st when they travel to Stonehill. The women's season will begin Friday the 30th in the Puck Drop Classic versus Plymouth State, and their season will continue Saturday the 31st versus Nichols. That's all for this week for EC Sports. For EC TV, I'm Matt Pritchard. And I'm Jessica Carroll. Happy Halloween, girls! <laughs> Thanks, guys. On Saturday, Zombie Prom will be held in gullies at 10 p.m. There will be a contest for best costume, so show up in your favorite costume for a chance to win. Now let's check out this week's forecast with our very own Jill Watch at the Weather Desk. Take it away, Jill. Thanks, Rain. After a sunny start to this week's forecast, we're predicting high winds and heavy showers for this Wednesday, starting at around 1 p.m. with high temps of 56 degrees and low temps of 53 degrees. Keep your rain wear out because the stormy conditions are predicted to linger onto early Thursday morning through the late afternoon with a high temperature of 68 degrees and a low of 44 degrees. Friday will finally start to see some sunshine as temperatures reach to the high 50s and low temperatures in the mid 30s around the nightfall. There's a 0% chance of precipitation this week. Saturday will be mostly sunny with high temperatures of 53 degrees by early evening, cooling down to around 40 degrees by nightfall. Sunday will be partly cloudy with high temperatures in the 50s by noontime and back down to the high temperatures in the 40s around 9 p.m. In world news for weather, on Tuesday, October 6th, a hurricane hit lower east coast with excessive force. Towns of South Carolina experienced record rainfall and heavy winds. Here are just some of the heartbreaking photos of the aftermath of Hurricane Joaquin. According to locals and the National Hurricane Center, the damage that the statewide flooding incident has caused is still in need of repair. I'm Jill Watch, and thanks for watching EC Weather. Now back to the desk. On Tuesday, don't miss the chance to network with some successful Endicott alumni at Mingle and Dress for Career Success, held at Misslewood at 5.30 p.m. Dinner will be provided, and an RSVP is required to attend. Email careers at endicott.edu to sign up. 
Now check out Shake My Head News with Molly and Simone. Hello and welcome to this week's segment of Shake My Head News. I'm Molly. And I'm Simone. A home break-in in Alpena, Michigan was solved pretty quickly thanks to cupcake icing. Police say a woman broke into a home Sunday morning and knocked over a tray of cupcakes before she fled. Police found the burglar a few blocks away from the home, highly intoxicated and covered in frosting. Speaking of cupcakes, a woman was charged with domestic battery this week for throwing cupcakes at her husband. Police say the woman squirreled with her husband Saturday night, then slapped him on the head and began pelting him with cupcakes from a dessert box. Police witnessed actual icing on the husband's face and shirt when they arrived. The wife admitted to the not-so-sweet assault and was given a $10,000 bond. 26-year-old Joshua Fort was arrested in Danbury, Florida Thursday morning after assaulting a karaoke DJ at Blackie's Bar. Fort was performing the Jay-Z and Justin Timberlake song, Holy Grail, when he heard a conflicting note played by DJ Isaac. Police say that when Isaac didn't pump up the volume on Fort's microphone, he slammed the DJ's laptop down, threw a glass that hit him in the head, and lifted him up and threw him onto the dance floor. Fort fled the scene, but later turned himself into county jail. Fort was charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Chewbacca was arrested Sunday morning in Ukraine while campaigning for Darth Vader. The person dressed as the legendary Wookiee was accused of violating a law that forbids campaigning on election day. Chewbacca appeared in court and was fined $7.50. After court, he told the media that he was unable to pay the fine because his funds are in an intergalactic bank that has no branches on this planet. I guess that is just what happens when you turn to the dark side. <laughs> That's all for this week's segment of Shake My Head News. Back to you, Brianna and Rain. At 7.30 p.m. that night, stop by Gully's for Tuesday Night Trivia, where you could win some awesome prizes. That's all for this week, girls. Thanks for watching.